Hello and welcome to another What Car 5 Key Things video, where today we're looking at the facelifted Porsche Macan. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that there are some subtly updated bumpers front and rear and a swanky new rear light bar. However, the big changes come under the bonnet, where for the first time you won't find a diesel engine. Instead, the eco-minded and company car drivers amongst you will be more interested in the two-litre petrol engine. There's also the usual selection of new colours on the outside, and of course, there's a new infotainment system inside, which is bigger and sharper than the old one. And don't forget to check out whatcar.com for our full review of the Macan and its rivals, and check out our new car buying section for big savings on loads of new cars. Being a Porsche, it's the rear of the Macan that most other road users are going to be seeing, and that's where the car's most noticeable exterior changes, the light bar. Like the Panamera, KN, and the brand new 911, you get a full width LED light bar with 3D Porsche lettering embedded into it. Now, we're not entirely convinced it makes the back of the Macan look any better, but at least your neighbor will know that you've just shelled out over 40,000 pounds on a brand new model. The second thing you need to know is something that you may have already noticed, this particularly violent shade of green. Now, it's called Mamba Green Metallic, and like Dolomite Silver Metallic, Crayon Grey, and Miami Blue, they are all new for 2019. If that wasn't enough, then you also have a choice of new 20 and 21 inch wheels to choose from as well. The third thing you need to know about the facelifted Macan is that there have been changes to the entry level two litre petrol engine. Now, the main thing is that it has a gasoline particulate filter. Now, what that does is take out any harmful bits from the exhaust to make it better for the environment. The downside is that power has been reduced slightly. However, if I put my foot down, you get a throaty roar and you surge forwards. In fact, 0-60 uh, comes up in around six and a half seconds if you've specified the Sport Prono package, which is, well, hot hatch fast. Now, if a mere two litre four cylinder engine is a bit weedy for you, there is a V6 powered S model. Not only does this have a lot more power, but on our driving today, we found it doesn't really use any more fuel than the four pot. With that in mind, that would be our engine of choice. Porsche hasn't just been content fiddling under the bonnet, they've also tweaked the suspension as well. Now, we don't at this point know specifics, but what we do know is that it's designed to sharpen up the handling and improve ride comfort as well. There is an underlying firmness to things, as you would expect from a Porsche, but even over sharp-edged potholes and bumps, it never gets crashy or uncontrolled. As for the handling, well, you get lovely meaty steering and there's very little in the way of body lean. So when we come up to a corner like this one, you can confidently place the nose and then get round with a minimum of fuss and lean. The next thing you need to know is that the dashboard has had a bit of a redesign inside. Now, the main reason for that is because there is a new 10.9 inch touchscreen infotainment system up from 7.2 inches in the old car. It uses the latest Porsche communication management software or PCM and has razor sharp graphics. It's also very, very responsive and also takes uh, commands from swipes and pinches like on a smartphone. Although ultimately we do prefer rotary dial control systems like BMW's iDrive, this for a touchscreen is very, very good and very easy to use. Elsewhere, the dashboard has changed a little bit less, so you still get a smorgasbord of buttons around the gear lever, which does mean you can feel your way around quite easily, but it does look a little bit old school, especially compared to the firm's Panamera and KN models with their glossy touch sensitive panels. Now, fact number five is something that Porsche probably would rather you didn't know, and that's that the Macan is actually based on the previous generation Audi Q5. Now, don't think this was a quick slap dash, whack the badges on and run job. No, Porsche went through the Q5 with a fine tooth comb to make sure that it drives like a true Porsche. Even though we're into the second generation of Q5, there's no doubt that the Macan is one of the best driver's choices in the segment. Porsche has made some worthwhile updates to the Macan. 
The infotainment system is better than before, the 2 litre petrol engine is cleaner, and it still remains a fine choice for the keen driver. However, the main Porsche Macan pitfalls remain, mainly that there's not much room in the back, the boot isn't huge, and it is quite expensive with not a huge amount of standard equipment. And don't forget, have a look at whatcar.com for our full review of the Macan, and check out our new car buying section for big savings on tons of new cars.